Hi, it's Bill the Handyman up here in Northern California. We're, today we're going to talk about converting a natural gas dryer to a propane dryer. And so these are two different styles. This one's got some brain problem, but uh, it would be converted. It was converted to propane. And the thing about converting things to propane if they're running on generators, it's not particularly advisable to run something with a brain on it because the brains are sensitive to uh, surges. And so this style dryer here has got the clips on each side of the bottom here. You'll need to push down on those tanks in order to pull this out. Basically, you push down on the tangs at the same time pull out here and you'll be able to open up the inside. And this particular uh, burner unit is over here and it's a little tricky to get in there and pull that without pulling everything out, but you can do it. You can remove that jet and that uh, the diaphragm top screw uh, without taking everything apart. And so what we've done here is we've uh, we basically we pulled a couple components out. First component was the the dryer uh, diaphragm. Uh, there's a uh, adjustment on the diaphragm right here that screws off on the top. You take that off, and then the jet on the front of this uh, on the front of that valve and. So these are the components here I'm talking about. You need to take this first part off and you got to be careful because these igniters are like little like eggshells so they break real easy so you got to be really careful with that. Here is the propane setup for the diaphragm. This is the jet for the propane. It's smaller than the natural gas jet and I'll show you that in a moment. And so this particular dryer here, the two screws on the top here that have to be removed, those are Phillips. And then we have the whatever keeper clips on the front. Just take a flathead screwdriver and hit those clips and this will come up. And there's a little disclaimer for you. And once you get that up, get your nut driver here and take these nuts off the sides here, here, and there. And so, yeah, I usually just put the nuts right here just because it's an easy place to remember where to put them. And then once you've done that, just sort of lift up and then lift up and pull out. And you can leave that wire connected if you're very careful. But you have to be very careful because this piece of plastic switch right there will fall apart if you put much tension on it. And then we need to take the drum out. Well you actually probably don't really have to take the drum out but it's a lot easier if you do and so if you do the belt is on like so and so basically I just stick my finger in underneath and pull it off a little tricky to do with one hand but yeah. and then lift up on the barrel and you can pull it out theoretically to 
replace the diaphragm nut screw adjustment and then the jet inside here. Okay, so once you've taken off the two holding screws uh, here and here, then this will come off. And once again, be very careful with the igniter. It's kind of like made of eggshells and it breaks very easily. So once you've taken that out, then you will loosen the the jet here and remove that, and then also this jet or the um, the diaphragm screw here. Now, your model may be a little bit different, but uh, this is the typical Whirlpool design. And then we'll grab the other components here and then swap them. So you notice this one has a long kind of stem. This is a propane one. goes in there like there. And then the uh, new jet goes in here. And that's your tip for today. Thanks for watching. If you need any help, you can contact me at Z underscore fixitman at yahoo.com. If this video helped you, please send me a donation. It's Bill's Recycling Enterprises, P.O. Box 7021, Eureka, California, 95502. And as well, I have a course in how to make money in the appliance repair business. And it involves a year of coaching and a link to over 100 repair videos. And if you're interested in that, you can contact me as well. Thanks for watching.